What is up guys, TEJ here and in my hands, I have four of possibly the most underrated wedges on the market today. And in today's video, we're gonna put them to the test. So let's get right into it. All right guys, so today we have a very fun video coming at you, and frankly, one that has been on my mind for quite a while now. Now, I do consider myself a bit of a wedge connoisseur, and all of these designs of wedges have been on my mind, on my radar for a little bit, and so in this video, I really just wanted to put them all to the test to see how they stack up and compare against one another. But aside from seeing how these stack up against one another, I'm very curious to see if one of these wedges can separate themselves from the pack and possibly go up and compete against one of the big big boy wedge OEMs. That being said, let's go ahead and cover the wedges we have in hand today. First and foremost, we have the Mizuno T24 in a 60 degree V-grind. Then we have the Edel SMS wedge in a 60 degree V-grind as well on that one. Then we have the PXG 0311 Sugar Daddy 2 in a 60 degree BP grind. And lastly, but certainly not least, we have the brand new Ping S159 in a 60 degree T grind. Now, aside from all of these wedges being 60 degrees of loft, I wanna let you guys know that they're also lying matched and shaft match as well so we can give you the most fair testing possible all that being said guys let's go ahead and get into testing i'll discuss how we're going to go about it once we get out on the golf course all right guys so the way that we're going to go ahead and work through this testing is we're going to take each wedge hit a couple full shots pit shots bunker chip rough shot and really just see how they stack up against one another in terms of looks feel performance and whatnot now the first wedge that we are starting with today is the pxg 0311 sugar daddy 2 in the bp grind so let's just go ahead and get started taking a look down at this thing first and foremost we got full face grooves on this which is something that i i haven't played a full face groove wedge probably since the phil mickelson grind quite a while ago from callaway but this thing looks really good in terms of a full face wedge a little bit of a rounded toe area a little bit of a rounded top line what i really like is that this has a little bit of a higher toe but it's not intrusively high it doesn't feel like it's too high if that makes sense but nonetheless let's go ahead and hit this thing and see what we got all right, that one felt like it had a lot of spin on it. All right, the quad was not set. So let's go ahead and give this another go. All right, that was a very similar strike to the first one. At least that's kind of what I felt. Yeah, really good. 29.3 launch, 11,500 spin, 82 ball speed, 95 carry. Very good numbers there in terms of a lob wedge. Feel-wise, kind of a, a solidly soft feel. I wouldn't say it feels like this is melting into the face in terms of softness, but it's definitely not like super firm by any means, if that makes sense. Yeah, that one also felt good to me. 11,700 spin, 27.6 launch, 82 ball, 96 carry. So in terms of numbers right there, really good. It seemed like all of those launched relatively low with a lot of spin, but we'll go ahead and hit one more because the first one didn't get picked up. Yeah, that's nice and low. You know, one of the biggest advantages of having a higher toe wedge is the fact that because the CG is a little bit higher, it wants to come out a little bit lower with more spin. That's 27.7 launch, 11,500 RPMs of spin, 81 ball, 94 carry. I mean, for me to be hitting full lob wedges and seeing them launch at like 28, that is really impressive from a launch perspective. And like I said, I mean, that's the advantage of having a slightly higher toe, which this wedge does have. All right, guys, so now we're gonna go ahead and hit our 50 yarder. As you go ahead and open this thing up, I think it looks really nice. I mean, there's a little bit of Roundedness in the shaping, but it's not too much so. It's actually arguably probably one of the best shaped wedges I have seen in quite a while. I don't know how over the moon I am about the full face, but I do like the shape of it. A little bit too much there, but in terms of numbers, 52 carry, 8200 spin, 27 launch. Go ahead and hit one more. Kind of caught that thin, not really a great strike, but 8,800 spin, 27 launch, 51 carry. So I mean, this wedge definitely does spin. That's what I feel like PXG's been known for with their wedges, and I would say this is absolutely no exception to that. Right guys, so now we're gonna go ahead and hit our bunker shot. I really like how it looks open. I mean, it's just, there's enough roundedness, but not too much. Really good shape. Moves through the bunker well. And I guess that's a little bit of the advantage of having this slightly higher BP grind as opposed to something like the C grind from them because this is a little bit of fluffier sand. It's gonna be a little bit harder to dig into the sand, so. Yeah, that was really good. Tons of spin on that. Just gonna keep it real. This is definitely a very spinny wedge. All right guys, so now we've got our pretty basic chip here and we're gonna see what we got with this thing. Tough to get this one close because it is pretty quick down that hill, but to me that definitely seemed like it had a little bit of check on it. 
You know, it's funny, as you move up to these shots, this wedge almost feels softer. I don't know if that makes any sense, but like just hitting these short little ones, it feels like it's coming off a little bit softer than I'm used to. It didn't feel quite that soft on the full shot, the 50 yard pitch. So definitely interesting. I mean, I think a lot of people have actually tended to rave about how soft PXG clubs are. This is very solid. I wouldn't say it's the softest thing I've ever hit by any means, but it's surprisingly soft, especially on these short little pitches for sure. Right guys, so the last shot we're gonna go ahead and hit here is sort of this rough pitch. I have no idea what the heck you would call this, but we'll see what we can do from here, see how this thing performs. This is a really tough shot, to be honest. It's not very thick rough, I mean, but that's Florida. What are you gonna do? Sit. Not great on that one, but I mean, you know, what's really interesting is you can actually see a little bit of the cover on the grooves of this wedge. You know, what I've really noticed with PXG wedges is they're just very spinny. I played with somebody quite a while ago who had a PXG, I think it was maybe one of their first gen models. The thing was destroyed. Like you couldn't even see the grooves and it was still checking. To me, this is no exception. I know I've mentioned it a bunch, but definitely a very spinny wedge in terms of what I'm seeing. All right, guys. So 0311 Sugar Daddy 2 is done. And now we are moving on to the Mizuno T24 60 degree V grind. Let's go ahead and jump into it. It. Taking a look down at this thing, different shape for sure. Now we don't have full face grooves on this. Head size, a lot smaller than the PXG Sugar Daddy 2. In terms of shaping, it's a little bit more of a rounded shape. I think there's a touch more belly in the leading edge. Definitely a rounded toe area, rounded top line, kind of a rounded transition as you move from hosel into leading edge. Just a softer shape. Just something that I feel like Mizuno has become known for over the years. Not a bad shape. It just depends kind of if you're used to it or not. But let's go ahead and hit this thing and see what we got numbers wise. Feel right there, that was actually really good. Solid shot. In terms of spin, 10,700 RPMs, 32.5 launch, a little bit higher launch, a little bit lower spin, 90 yards of carry, 78 ball. Not a bad start. I would say maybe a touch softer than the PXG. Not a great swing. I pulled that like crazy. But in terms of numbers, 95 carry, 9,700 spin, 31.5 launch. Definitely to me doesn't seem quite as low launch or high spin as the PXG. Shaping's definitely preference based. I would say I don't know if I'm over the moon about how small the head is. I don't mind it in a lob wedge. It's not like a deal breaker, but it is definitely on the smaller side. All right, one more here. That felt good. I feel like that had a lot of spin on it. And it did. 29-1 launch, 11,500 spin, 78 ball, 89 carry. Yeah, that's a little bit better. I would say spin and launch wise, it really depends on the grind. You know, that's a very important thing. Turf interaction plays a big role in launch and spin. But to me, just looking at the numbers, I would say it's a little bit higher launch and a little bit lower spin in comparison to the PXG. Right guys, so now we're on to our 50 yard pitch with the T24. Something I forgot to mention earlier is that we actually have this in a raw finish. The cool thing about Mizuno is they offer four finishes in the T24. So you've got denim, copper, satin, blue, and raw. Me personally, I'm a big fan of raw finish wedges. I think this thing looks really good. When you go ahead and open this up, to me it looks better. I like the roundedness in terms of an open face position at a dress. When I have a square face and it's rounded, I'm not really a big fan of that, but I do like it open. Feels good there. Yeah, that's got some spin on it. 9,000 spin, 32 launch, 54 carry. If you can catch this thing low enough on the face, it definitely spins. And frankly, I would probably argue it's pretty darn close to the PXG. But to me, there's a little bit more width in the sole of the PXG, which is why I think it was coming out a little bit lower with more spin and the fact that I think the CG was a little bit higher on the PXG. Because like that's got a lot of spin. I'm catching that in the right spot on the face. Yeah, 9200, 29.5 launch, 50 carry. So super important to make sure you get fit for the right grind to ensure you're hitting your launch and spin windows. But if you can catch this thing in the right spot on the face, it definitely spins. All right, guys, now we're on to our bunker shot. Let's go ahead and see how this thing performs. Once again, when you go to open this thing up, I do really like the roundedness. I think it looks really nice open. If you're somebody who opens the club up a lot around the greens, I think you're going to really appreciate the shaping of the T24. Not a great shot there. To me, what I have noticed is this feels like it has a slightly sharper leading edge as opposed to the PXG, so that's definitely something to note. To me, that one kind of dug a little bit. Obviously, I'm not a robot. I'm not going to hit perfect golf shots all the time, but that is definitely something I am noticing a little bit about this wedge. Not terrible, not great. I think definitely something to note is the leading edge a little bit sharper than the PXG, but very solid from a bunker perspective. To me, I love the shaping of it when you go ahead and open it up, especially in the bunker. I love the finish as well. It's very, very sunny out here. When this thing starts to rust and the sun's hitting it, it's not gonna glare up in your eyes, which I think is fantastic. All right, basic chip with the T24. 
Yeah, that one had a little bit of check on it. Sit, all right, solid. Yeah, feel-wise, once again, Mizuno's known for their feel. This thing feels nice. I wouldn't say it's the softest wedge I've ever hit, but it feels good. I mean, it's definitely soft enough for a wedge. Solid, let's go ahead and move on to the rough chip. Right guys, so last chip we got here is the rough sort of half chip, half pitch. Let's see what we can do. Is it? It's got some sauce though. Oh, that had some sauce from the rough. Very, very nice. That's got some sauce on it too. Yeah, really good. Wasn't sure at first about the shaping of this wedge, but honestly, the more I've used it, the more I've come around to it. If you like a little bit more softness in terms of the shaping, I think you're gonna really, really like this T24. And I really, I absolutely love the raw finish. It's probably the best thing about this wedge. Right guys, so next wedge we've got in the rotation today is the Edel SMS 60 degree V grind. As we go ahead and take a look down at this, wow, much different shape. So first and foremost, we got full face grooves on this wedge, but what I'm noticing is it's a lot more of an ovally shape shape as opposed to a rounded shape. I would say almost a little bit more iron-like, if that makes any sense. But let's go ahead and hit this thing and see what the numbers look like. Don't know if I'm over the moon about the shape, especially in a 60. It just, it, it frankly just looks like a full face iron. Not a very good shot. But in terms of numbers, 33 launch, 93 carry, 80 ball, 87.50 spin, a lot lower spin there. That would have felt better. Definitely caught it a little bit lower on the face, but it's just coming out high with not much spin. 34.5 launch, 82.50 spin, 85 carry. All right, let's try to lock in and hit one as good as we can hit it. I mean, to be honest with you guys though, I felt like those were both decent in terms of strike. Just came out high with not much spin. Yeah, this is just a much higher launching wedge. Really interesting. 38 launch, 6,700 spin. And it's not like I'm catching these high in the face by any means. I'm gonna hit one more just for good measure. Yeah, not great contact there. Again, 38 launch, 90 carry. Hmm, a little bit higher launching, a lot lower spinning. Let's go ahead and see if this thing can redeem itself. Not ideal on the full shots. As we go ahead and open this thing up, the shaping's a little bit better because there's a touch of roundedness kind of in the leading edge into the top line, into the toe area. It does look a little bit nicer open, but still kind of an odd shape in my opinion. I felt like that was about as spinny as I could hit it. 8,500, 33 launch, 53 carry. Yeah, I mean, it's just pretty simply a little bit higher launch and a little bit lower spin than the other two wedges I've tested. I mean, there's just, to me, there's no other way around it because I felt like that was super spinny in terms of how I contacted that golf ball. And it just, I wouldn't say it was low spin, but certainly not super high. That's another one I felt like I really tried to put a lot of spin on. 8,500, 34 launch. Yeah, so just a little bit higher launch, a little bit lower spin than the other two wedges. Let's move up to the bunker. Right, guys, onto the bunker. Let's see what we can do with the SMS. Again, I don't mind the shape as much open, but still an odd shape for sure. Seems like it moves through the bunker well. And yeah, not a lot of spin on that. Just kind of still same as what I've seen in the last couple shots. Yeah, I mean, it seems like a decent bunker wedge in terms of the grind. This V-grind seems like it moves to the bunker well. I like that we have a lot of relief on this thing on the back edge. You don't tend to see that. Usually with most OEMs, you're not going to see a super high bounce wedge with a lot of relief. So that's something I do like about this V-grind. Right, guys, onto our little basic chip here. Yeah, as much as I don't mind the wedge open, it is just super weird to look at in the square face position. I do like the finish, though. I like that it's sort of a bead blasted finish. Definitely looks better in terms of glare. Yeah, and that's kind of why I like this V-grind, because I bottomed out a little bit early there, but it didn't grab on me, even though we're a little bit into the grain. So that is something I'm going to give them props on. Not a lot of companies are offering a super high bounce wedge like this. To me, although this is a V-grind, the T24 is a V-grind, Vokey offers a V-grind, I think this is a much higher bounce lead edge V-grind as opposed to the other two, Mizuno and Vokey. So definitely something to note from that perspective. Not a great shot there, but for me, it's just, it's not something I'm falling in love with in terms of the shaping. And I think because of that, it's a little bit harder to execute the shots. All right guys, now onto our rough shot. Let's see what we can do from here. Seemed like it had a little bit of spin on it. Yeah, just not quite as much check as the T24, even though I felt like that was contacted very similarly to the way I hit the T24. Feel-wise, definitely a decent feeling wedge. I mean, I wouldn't say it's firm by any means. I would say kind of in a similar category to the PXG. Probably not as soft as the T24, but not firm. I mean, definitely not like a harsh feeling wedge. 
yeah, once again, I mean, that's not a good shot, and that's definitely my fault, but just looking down at this thing, it's just, it's too weird of a shape for me. It's just, it's very hard to execute the shots when you're not comfortable. It's very, very important to find a wedge that looks good to you. I personally think that's probably one of the most important things in a wedge, and to me, this one's just not quite cutting it. Let's move on to the Ping S159. Right, guys, so the last wedge we are on to today is gonna be Ping's latest S159 in a 60-degree T-grind, so a little bit lower bounce in this wedge. It's gonna be interesting to see how it performs from a turf interaction perspective, but nonetheless, taking a look down at this thing at address looks really good. I would argue this is probably the best looking wedge I've looked at today. In terms of the leading edge, there's a little bit of belly here, maybe a touch squarer in terms of the toe area, a little bit of roundedness in the top line. What's interesting is actually as this hosel transitions into the face, there's a little bit more width here. I'll try to kind of show you what I mean by that, but no offset on this thing. Looks really good. I mean, it is a really nice looking wedge, probably the best looking ping wedge I have laid my eyes on. That was solid right there. 12,000 spin, 29 launch, 93 carry. Really good right there. Mm, caught that a little thin. It'll be interesting to see what the numbers look like. Oh, 11,400 spin, 28 launch, 82 ball, 96 carry. That's really good. Yeah, I mean, Ping has really, they've come a long way, I would say, in the wedge department. And just looking at these initial numbers, seems like this is no exception. Pulled that a little bit. I don't think that's gonna have a ton of spin on it. Yeah, it's not. 34 launch, 8,300 spin, 92 carry. Yeah, not great right there, but the first two I think were better representations of what this thing can do launch and spin wise. Obviously this having a little bit lower bounce, it is hard to get the launch and spin in the right window, but to see those first couple that low and that high spin is really nice to see. Right guys, so now onto our 50 yarder with the S159. Let's see what we can do with this thing as you lay it open. Again, really good shape. I mean, they've done an amazing job with the shaping of this wedge. I'm just gonna keep it real. Not great contact there. Ooh, almost hit it. Yeah, 7,000 spin, 32 launch, a little bit lower launch than the Adele. That is the only tough thing about comparing different grinds. If this was a little bit higher bounce, I think we would have seen a little bit more spin on that one. But nonetheless, let's see if we can try to kind of catch one how we want to. Yeah, that sucked. But that's not the wedge's fault. That's just the fact that it has a lot lower bounce. All right, let's see. That's better. Yeah, I just had to like add bounce to it by just opening it up more, but that was really good. 9,400 spin, 34 launch, 46 carry. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm used to seeing. Again, like I said, it's tough to kind of compare wedges when the grinds aren't quite right. This is the only one I had access to for this video, so don't fry me in the comments. But yeah, I think if you catch this thing in the right spot on the face, if the grind is right for you, this thing is very low launch, very high spin. Right guys, so now onto the bunker with the S159. We'll see what we got. As you open this thing up once again, it just looks so good to me. I love the finish. I love Love the shaping. Ping really nailed it with this. Yeah, that one definitely dug a little bit more, but I mean, that's just purely the fact that this thing has such low bounce compared to the other ones. There's just no other way around it. That one was good though, really good. Almost made it. Yeah, seems solid out of the bunker. Again, when it comes to these bunker shots though, you gotta get fit for your wedges and your grinds to ensure that you're gonna get good contact. Especially out of like thick sand like this, you really wanna make sure that you have enough bounce to where you can be steep and it's not gonna dig on you. So definitely something to note. Very, very important to get fit for the bounce and grind of your wedges. All right guys, last couple of shots of the day. S159 on this basic simple little chip. Feel-wise, I would say this probably feels about the same as the Edel and the PXG. It really isn't super soft, not super firm by any means. I would say definitely not as soft as the T24, but not a bad feeling wedge. I mean, there's, there's no other way around it. It's not like harsh feeling, just not like crazy soft. That one felt a little bit better though in terms of feel. Pretty good, almost made it. Right guys, so last shot before we go ahead and rank these wedges from one to four. Let's see what the S159 can do from the rough. I really cannot say enough good things about the shape of this wedge. It is absolutely superb. Eh, not a great shot there, but again, I mean, you could see a little bit of cover on the grooves. This thing definitely, like, it spins. I mean, Ping has, <laughs> has made it known. If you need wedges that are gonna spin, these can do it. Yeah, that's got some sauce, even from the rough. Obviously, that's not gonna like stop, but it had a little bit of check on it. So there it is, guys. That's the Ping S159. It's been fun testing. Let's go ahead and rank these from one to four. Right, guys, so there it is. That was our testing of what I believe are four of the most underrated wedges on the market. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like button and the subscribe button as well. Additionally, if you have any recommendations as to how you'd like to see wedges tested in the future, drop it in the comments down below. I'm very curious to hear your guys' thoughts. That being said, let's go ahead and get into our rankings. At number four, we have the 
GE Dell SMS wedge. You know, coming into this test, I really, really wanted to like this thing. I thought it would have a great chance to win, but it just didn't quite cut it for me. Looks wise, the shaping of this SMS wedge just doesn't quite suit my eye. It's kind of an odd shape in terms of feel. I didn't think it was overly soft, not harsh, but just not overly soft. And additionally, I saw it being a little bit higher launching and lower spinning than the other wedges we tested. That being said, I do have to give Edel props for two things. First and foremost, the amount of sole grinds they offer. I think it's really impressive. It's not something that we see from a lot of major OEMs, let alone a smaller boutique manufacturer. So I love that. Additionally, I do think that the SMS weights really help in terms of dialing in consistency. In fact, I absolutely fell in love with the SMS Pro irons that have the exact same weighting system as these wedges. Did a review on them. Really, really enjoyed them. I'll go ahead and link that down in the description below if you want to go ahead and check that out. Next up, guys, in a tie for second, we have the Mizuno T24 and the PXG 0311 Sugar Daddy 2. Now, I absolutely hate ties, and I'm sure you guys do as well, but with these two wedges, in my opinion, they're both really solid, just in different ways, and so it's tough for me to put one above the other. You know, feel-wise, I think Mizuno wins. Launch and spin-wise, I think PXG wins. I think that the PXG is probably one of the best full-face wedges I have ever seen down at a dress. It looks awesome behind the golf ball, but on the contrary to that, I'm not really sure how sold I am on full-face grooves and how they look down at a dress in general. The Mizuno, on the other hand, a lot more traditional in terms of looks. Beautiful when opened, but you could definitely argue it is a little bit small and rounded in terms of a square face address position. Additional things you have with the PXG, you've got adjustable weights on this, you've got two finishes, black and satin chrome, and you also have two grind options available as well. And while the Mizuno doesn't offer any adjustable weighting, which I do prefer about the PXG, you actually have four grind options and four finishes, so two more compared to the PXG. So it's really one of those things where they're both very solid, just a little bit different in terms of what is offered. Now, that being said, I am very curious to hear which one of these two edges you guys would prefer. So let me know down in the comments below. Now with the number one spot in our rankings today, we have Ping's latest S159 wedge. And in my opinion, if you didn't think of Ping as a wedge company before, this one will probably change your mind. Looks wise, I think this is probably one of the best wedges I have ever seen down at a dress. The shaping is impeccable. I love the clean backing of this wedge. It looks really sleek and simple. The low launch and high spin characteristics that you want in a wedge are absolutely there with this thing if you can make sure you get the grind right. And what's nice about the S159 is they offer six grinds at retail in two different finishes. On top of those things that are offered, this wedge also has Ping's Hydro Pearl finish on the face, which has been proven to add spin in wet weather conditions. And to me, once you add all of those things up, I think it just shows that this wedge really does have the complete package and frankly has a really good chance at being the best wedge of 2024. You know, the only area I might argue that these are imperfect is in terms of feel. They are definitely not the softest feeling wedges I have ever hit, but on the contrary to that, I don't think you want your wedges to be overly soft. We beat these up and if the material gets too soft, they're going to wear out really quickly. So them being a little bit firmer, it's going to save the grooves and it's going to save you a little bit of money in the long run. All that being said, guys, that's a test. I really hope you enjoyed it. I'm very curious to hear your opinions on these wedges. If you tested them or you're considering any of them for your bag in 2024. So go ahead and drop those in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments down below or shoot me a DM on Instagram. Make sure you are subscribed to the YouTube channel and you click that notification bell so you're notified anytime that we post a new video. Additionally, make sure you're following us on our other social media channels, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok. Always great content on those channels as well. We'll catch you in the next video. Peace.